Hey, welcome back to Milton Daily Homes. Chuck here. And if you want to come on a tour of homes, we run them seven days a week. It's just over there. Not designed to find you the perfect house, but designed to get you familiar with what your price range offers you, the different neighborhoods in town, and to find out if Milton is for you. Because we've had people that come on tour and they say, you know, it's not really my thing or anything. That's that's great. That's fantastic. It's better to know that six months ahead of time than to know it the week before you really want to buy a house. And I find a lot of people don't put enough stress on the information gathering process. Uh, they, they kind of start a bit too late for the most part. There are some people that do a good job in gathering information early, but even six to 12 months before you actually want to buy is not unusual to actually, I mean, it's not a bad thing to actually get out and start looking at some information. So enough about that. Let's get to today's list. There's 18 properties. The first one up and just order them by price. Just click the price button right below the map. And you've got 20th side road at 1.1 and a little bit further out. The, it's a bungalow actually. And you can see that the land up here is a little bit higher. This is all walkout basement stuff. Huge amounts of space, probably 8,000 square feet of finished area. And it probably needs a little bit of updating. I mean, those are those are 80s tiles right there. You've got your carpet. You've got a big one acre pond in the middle, about 10 acres on the property. And it looks like a very special, unique home. I mean, this is really a $3 million house if you, uh, if you were to renovate and finish it. Um, the other thing is it's on electric baseboard heat, which would absolutely crush most people on the cost. Uh, so you want to be really, really careful with what rooms you're heating and which ones you aren't. Now, there may be some things like wood-burning fireplaces that can help actually heat the house, which is certainly a good thing. Um, it's interesting. I, you know, for the amount of size and the size of the lot and the pond, it's probably in a fair value range, but it's finding someone. So it's not really a 1.1. It's probably, even if you do the bare minimum, you're going to have to put a couple hundred thousand in. So it's actually much closer to 1.5 to even maybe two if someone really wanted to take it to a good level. Now, Steel's is at 5.75. Uh, it's on 14 acres. It's probably one of the nicest homes I've ever seen on Milton Daily Homes. And you've got a kitchen. Right beside that, you've got a prep kitchen that's probably better than most people's kitchens to begin with. And it's almost the same size as the other one. Uh, you've got some great views off the escarpment here. Um, City of Toronto. If you check the virtual tour, it's actually quite quite a nice little treat to uh, to go through. And it's a big house, indoor pool, that kind of stuff. So really, really, really nice home. I wouldn't say it's in most people's budgets. And we really haven't seen a $5 million sale. I don't know if we've seen in, in years anything close to that. So it'd be interesting to see. Not the easiest one to sell. A lot more common to see it on the Oakville uh, waterfront. And you look and you say, you know, a view of the escarpment versus being right on the water. I don't know, like I would tend to believe that being on the water is still something more preferred, although the view is fantastic. So 235 Bronte is at 284.9. Two of them just came out at 299, so you're talking 15 grand discount, and I tend to think that this one's much more in line with what they're usually selling for. Uh, McDowell is at 339, fantastic property, a little bit older for the three story, but I mean, one at 359 just went under contract. And I mean, this home compares actually very well to that. Nice finishes inside. They've done a very good job, uh, updated a lot of things about this house. And you're talking, this home is probably eight or nine years old. It does not look like it. It looks like something that's definitely, you know, one or two. And uh, if they don't get multiple offers on this one, I'd be very surprised. July 18th is their magic date. And uh, boy, 339 is a killer, killer deal on this one based on what else has been selling. It's a three bedroom. So the other two rooms are not huge, but they can be functional and they can work for smaller kids, offices, that kind of stuff. So Kerr Trail is at 374. It's a croft site. It's inside. It's all brick. Uh, it's okay inside. It doesn't have a lot of fancy stuff in it. It's probably pretty close to market value. And they've done a bit of interlocking in the back. So there's nothing exciting about this one. They do have a little bit more competition in this price range than there's been in the last few months but I still think that they should do okay. So we've got Porter Way here at 379. Uh, and so it looks like the Clayton model, of which there's been quite a few recently, and you've got California shutters, you've got the hardwood floors. Uh, there was one with a finished basement that sold for less than what these guys are asking. So they might be a little bit high. They're a little smaller than the croft side by about 70 square feet. So we've got Livingston at 379.5, townhouse, 
long narrow family room in the, or living room in the front. You've got your family room in the back. This enclosure has always puzzled me. I've never really seen the benefit in having it. It just kind of cuts off the space. You probably need it for structural support, but just okay to me. I don't know if I love this one uh, with a finished basement, which the builder has done in the past. I'd say it's a little bit more of a compelling argument. We've got coming here, which is really entry point for semi-detached. There's only one full bathroom upstairs. The parquet, you know, there's a company called Mr. Sandless that does a great job at refinishing, kind of recoloring the floors. It's probably less than a buck a square foot. And uh, so it's just tight, you know, like it's it, it's an alternative to the croft side, I would say. I'm getting a semi versus a townhouse, but you might just have a little bit more work to do. And it's all brick, and uh, the location's good. The schools in this area are quite good. McDonald Crescent is at $3.99, so it's basically about as entry point as you can get in Dorset Park right now. There's very few homes that list with the first number being a three. And it looks like it's uh, it's got a second and third level. So I don't know if there, there may be, if it's kind of a, a split level design. It probably needs some work. It says as is condition. And I would definitely say that, uh, that it would be something where you expect a bit of fixing up in this home. Agents need to stop using the word irregular because it has no... It has nothing good. I, I don't think there's any good connotation that comes from that word. We've got this one at Evans at 404. It's probably around 1,500 square feet. You can see a dining room in the front, which some people use as an actual family room, and then they'll use this as the, the dining area. And the kitchen is dark, and they've done the countertops, the undermount sink, and so on. I actually think it shows pretty well. So at 404, they're they're rocking and rolling. I think these guys have a lot to offer. You gotta watch the roofs in this area because you're talking more than 10 years old. Usually roofs should give you 15, 16 years, but a lot of the ones in this area, even after 10 or 11, are starting to need replacing. We've got this one on Beatty, which is just over 1,400 square feet. You've got two rooms here. You've got the nice rounded arch between them. Nice light colors. It looks like the home is clean and tidy. And they've done a good job in the back of just a little sitting areas. I love how there's like this little dedicated area just for the chair that you could read a book. Uh, and the yard's a pretty good size too. It's a standard 36 by 80, but because the home is actually, they build the same homes 2,000 square feet on this property, you actually get a little bit more yard because the house is not huge. Uh, 449 is a nice price. Under 450 for a detached is definitely a nice place to be in. Farrington's at 449. Now we're talking a semi with a finished basement, almost 2,000 square feet plus the finished. Probably pretty decent value. You figure this home itself would probably be around the 430 without the finished basement. And then you've got what looks like a pretty decent area downstairs too. Um, pie shape, so it's a little bit wider across the back. And uh, it's on the south side. The north side of the street actually backs onto the uh, the school. Costigan is at 505. This one actually looks like a pretty good deal as well. A uh, bit of a, a kind of runaround to get through to the main area. Then you've got your kitchen with your eat-in and full double garage. And you've got a nice looking yard too. It's a good amount of space, about 100 feet deep by 36 with some mature trees. That's what you get for 500 if you want a double garage. So nice stuff. I like that one. Howden Crescent is at 519.8. Single car garage, tw about 20, 35 square feet. It's called a Sterling, four bedrooms upstairs. Not tremendously upgraded. I think there's a lot more that you can buy with your money at the at the 520 mark, especially if you're calling it a single garage. Do single garages sell in this range? Absolutely. Usually you're talking more than 2,000 square feet, plus some kind of a lot premium, plus a basement, and usually a pretty good looking home. Uh, Pringle is at 529, it's a mountain holly, so it's between 2,000 2,100 square feet. There is a double car garage, and I've never understood on this home why they don't do the angle a little bit more towards the front, so you get that impression of the double car garage. Uh, hardwood floors. Kitchen looks okay. I'm a big fan of the white kitchens, but I think that having white appliances with a cream or white kitchen, you want to do something in contrast. Usually stainless steel is the way to go. Uh, I don't know if I see the value in this, although a model that's about 200 square feet smaller than this one called the Quincy Corner has even sold up in the 520s, although I don't know who brought the offer. I wouldn't recommend that. Uh, Pine Street is 625. It's a big, older house, and so you've got almost that century home. You've got the 
you know, the wood trim and a lot of original finishes. This one's actually in pretty good shape. Like they've, they've kept a lot of the, um, it, you know, like the transoms and things around the doors. The kitchen's older, but it's, it's tasteful. It's still, it's got a little food prep area just over here. Uh, you have a main floor master bedroom essentially with a uh, with a bathroom this home at some point had the upstairs rented so there's actually a staircase leading from the second floor up to the third floor the third floor is this huge unfinished loft and it's a really nice space i imagine that being a, a, a complete kick-ass master bedroom or it could be a place where the kids can play it could be a home office on the third floor so there's a lot of space here uh, it's on a good sized piece of property. Six twenty five, I think, is a pretty good deal. From what else I've seen, this one has a lot, a lot, a lot of space. Now it's it's a little close, like it's not in the premium downtown area, but it's because it's a little close to some of the commercial stuff, a little bit closer to the mall versus the stuff that you start to see a little bit further in the subdivision. Um, but it's uh, but it's far enough in. I think it's still got nice surroundings. So I like this one. It's a really good property. Maddox is at eight forty nine. It's about thirty three hundred square feet. They've got some nice uh, texture here. I mean, I sometimes when something is just completely rigid and boxy, I find it really it's kind of boring. So it's nice when you've got a little bit of stuff for your eyes here. You've got some nice crown moldings, tiles on diagonal. You've got some nice furniture in here. They've done a good job decorating this place. Very, very nice. The kitchen's upgraded. I mean, if you look, you can find homes that maybe aren't quite as fancily finished, but I mean, they're less than 800 for this size. So they might be a little bit high. I think that there's always that chance that, uh, that you can find someone who walks in and absolutely loves the house. Usually if you're up at 850, you're a little bit bigger than what they are. First line is at 925, and deceivingly, this home is big. It's like 3,300 square feet of actual living space, but it doesn't look like that when you're looking at it here. I almost wonder if a wider angle or an aerial shot might have been good for this one. It's on about f almost five acres. Uh, you can see they've done some upgrades in the kitchen for countertop, undermounted sink. You can work with wood cabinets if you don't like those colors. You can stain them. You can do a lot of things with, with real wood. And the windows look like they're in pretty good shape. But something like this, a little harder to tell from just the MLS listing. It's not a bad size for the price when you combine it on the 4.74 acres. And it's reasonably close to town, so it's a little bit south of 15th Side Road, which is good. And you almost find it 15, 20, 25, 30. You can see the prices actually go down as you get further up and further from, uh, from from civilization, basically. So that's the list for today. Some pretty awesome stuff at the beginning, a couple good ones in the list. And if you have any questions, just give us a call. We're definitely here to help you, keep you safe, and really get you involved in the right thing for you. So have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow.